it's difficult because um, it's not so much a plot, you know. I mean, there is a definite, I think there is a definite narrative there. I think in some ways it's a question about death, it's a question about the big death, but really a question about the smaller death, uh, when you say goodbye, when you leave and when you stay. You know, there is this tension, I think, in this film about someone who needs to stay and be present for their father and someone who needs to leave. It is about our moment in life, uh, our duties as children. Uh, I think it's about the way in which art or form may give us uh, space to wrestle with these questions, you know. I think there's a question that I've always had about does art really matter, you know, in the face of tragedy and poverty? Do these big things that we make, whether it's architecture or a film, where does it matter? And I believe it does. So it's very personal in the sense that it addresses a lot of the things that I have been consumed by, a lot of the questions uh, both about life and about form and about parents and children. You know, these are questions that I've thought about. It's a kind of cinema that I really believe is important for our modern world. You know, for me, I think Ozu, the reason why I appreciate him is not in a fetishistic way, but I think he was trying to ask, how, do you, how can we be modern and not lose our soul? Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that's 100% true, <laughs> yeah. I watch, most of the films that I watch is like world cinema. Uh, in world cinema, you're used to diversity, you're used to a certain kind of conversation, a certain kind of rhythm. I want that to be true for American cinema. 20 years ago, even in, especially in middle America, the idea of eating sushi was gross to most people. Now, in middle America, people talk about sushi and coffee. I think there's going to be a moment where people talk about a certain kind of cinema that the world has been appreciating for a, a long time. I, I believe that. I hope that's true. And so part of making Columbus is like this belief that um, there is a taste for this kind of cinema, um, you know, hopefully in, 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 in France and hopefully around the world, you know. There's a lot of uh, fortune, you know, a lot of luck involved in, in that. Uh, but I did know that I love a film where you can discover a new actor that you didn't, you're not familiar with, and they sort of break through. That kind of uh, introduction to someone is always very exciting to me. I also knew that this main uh, female character was going to be working class. And for me, when I see a very well-known actor playing uh, working class, it's harder for me to process the financiers, you know, that's always hard for you to, to say that. And, but they, they've stuck with it. She was, you know, uh, I think we knew at one point she's going to be a discovery, and she, I think, is. Um, and then someone like Parker was really like, uh, I, I, you know, I've, of course, I've uh, adored her. She's like an independent, you know, in America, she represents independent cinema. She still believes in independent cinema. Uh, and so she was, you know, a fantastic uh, person to bring into this sort of a world. And she made everybody, when she came into the room, it changed the dynamic because she had her own idea of her character that was very strong. Uh, and John, you know, John Cho, who uh, has been in so many movies, but not uh, a, a movie where he got to be quiet. And I, I was really fortunate because they all harmonized so well and they uh, were so committed to this uh, kind of film. Um, so yeah, I think um, bringing them together was, was, you know, was a real uh, honor, delight. I knew that that would be a little bit of a challenge. I mean, you know, because I also wanted the movie to not just be a formal exercise. Like, it mattered to me that it had humanity and warmth and some emotion to it. 
you know, there are certain films that are just slow, and I don't know if you ever connect to it because uh, the characters are also very distant. And um, so part of me wanted to balance that with uh, a, a, an actress who was going to very much captivate you and, and make you lean into it. Um, but yeah, but I also knew that the pacing uh, was deliberate because I think the films that stay with you, you know, I think whether at the moment, if you will be uh, patient enough to see it, I do think that those kind of films uh, uh, reward you the next day and the day after. There were two reasons why that was important. One was because of time. You know, we had, again, 18 days to shoot a film, which is not a lot. And if you have to manage your time, you have to decide what you're willing to give up and what you're willing not to give up. And for some people, it's going to be uh, they want as much coverage of a scene as possible. And so if you choose coverage, then the setup of how you're going to is going to be compromised. For me, I knew because of uh, the time that I was going to give up coverage or the, uh, a scene might play itself out. And so all the things that I, I cared about about the scene, I, uh, the frame would have to de determine some of that. I knew that I was going to care about the image because for me, it was going to be about our relationship to space. I think architecture is about our relationship to space and the way we construct space and the relationship to negative space. So I knew that that was going to be a part of it, but it was even more so because of the time that uh, I knew that um, I was going to use my time to determine the space of every scene and every shot. I do think like the accessibility of watching things uh, online, I'm not so precious about it because I've had some of my best film experiences by myself, watching it sometimes on my laptop and being completely changed, you know? So I don't think that watching it um, pers by yourself, streaming online, um, I think that that, that is, can be equally profound.